Did you know that Alexander the Great may have started a cult for his gay dead boyfriend? Did you know Alexander the Great's father may have been killed by his gay lover at his daughter's wedding? Ancient Greece was a non-heterosexual society. This means the ancient Greeks believed in the theory of two loves, earthly love and heavenly love. Late French historian Michel Foucault analyzed a famous Pausanian speech in Plato's Symposium and distinguishes the differences between two loves. Earthly love focused on an individual's acts and duties and was a free man's lower love, while heavenly love was a free man's higher love and was defined by a feeling for the beauty of boys. Earthly and heavenly love differ from heterosexuality and homosexuality. The ancient Greeks viewed the two loves as separate duties to partake, making it common for same-sex relationships to occur, where sexuality labels an individual's orientation or sexual preference. Today, the LGBTQ community makes up nearly 8% of America's youth today and continues to rise. Despite the significant number of nearly 1.3 million kids, 2017 was marked as the second consecutive year in which hate crimes regarding the LGBTQ community tallied to be more than 6,100 reported incidents. These hate crimes could be caused by the heteronormativity society has invented for a heterosexual dominance, constructing the belief that any other sexuality is immoral or queer. This heteronormativity concept suggests we are supposed to adhere to specific behaviors, and if someone practices same-sex marriage, they are shamed. This construct has put an obligation to members of the gay community to expose their sexuality. Although coming out can be a significant part in someone's life and a proud moment, it should not continue to exist in some circumstances. Maintaining a concept for an individual to admit their sexuality creates a false norm for how society should behave. Heterosexuals do not have any additional entitlement, nor do they have the right to discriminate an individual regarding their orientation. So I came out to my parents in seventh grade as bisexual at the time, and since I, since that, then I have changed the way I identify to pansexual. You know, I think it was kind of getting to the point where I was tired of you know, having to hide, um, especially in school. Um, and with my family, um, you know, I couldn't be my true authentic self. Western society today is extremely focused on the concept that there is only supposed to be one sexuality. In fact, roughly 40% of the United States has low to negative overall policy tallies protecting the LGBTQ community. History, however, proves that same-sex relationships were practiced. The term heterosexual wasn't even introduced to the states until 1892, when the making of the middle class and heterosexuality went hand in hand. Katz teaches in his novel that the 1890s was full of anti-homosexuals and society has not yet moved past the procreative norm to uphold a non-productive heterosexuality. This norm, however, is contradictory to the practices in New England colonies between 1607 and 1740. Early New England culture was dependent over separate spheres in sex and erotacy of reproduction. Society during this era was not concerned with same-sex relationships for women because their primary concern was to utilize fertilization, and you can't waste an egg with another woman. Women were constantly dismissed if they were participating in homosexual behavior because they were not, as Ned Katz states, wasting fertilization by having promiscuous relationships with a man. Katz explains that these colonies did not view same sex as deviant because erotic desire for a different sex was not construed as a norm. The United States LGBTQ community today is estimated to be 10 million people. So how did society create today's heteronormativity to be straight? It's such like a hypocritical double standard to expect for people who aren't straight to come out and not expect straight people to. I think that derives from people's like, you know, need for labels. And, you know, when you see something that's not, you know, in this case, heteronormative, you have to know what it is. I don't like the assumption that everyone is straight and I wouldn't want anyone to assume that everyone's gay either. I wish that you could just ask someone, be like, who do you like? What do you like to do? Who are you interested in? And it's just a lot easier because 
A lot of this stuff is, it varies so much person to person. Everyone is who they are, they should love who they love, and you don't go around asking someone if they're straight, so why do you need to know about everyone's sexuality? There's some level of discomfort in not knowing how someone identifies, or or there's also a discomfort in not understanding. Marc-Andre Ravelot was a French poet and essayist on homosexuality who embraced the links between homosexuality and Catholic beliefs. He moved past the contemporary vision of homosexuality as a third sex to consider it as an expression of a human sexuality. In 1895, the American Medical Journal published a translated French article written by Marc-Andre Ravelot. In it, Ravelock specifies that there is no line of demarcation between the heterosexual and the homosexual. Katz further exploits Ravelock's point that if non-procreative heterosexuality is legitimate, it's difficult to understand why non-procreative homosexuality should not also be proved. Perhaps the heteronormativity for an individual to be straight derives from religion and how the Bible tries to push a dimorphic sexual culture on society. The Bible states, if a man lies with a male as a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. If this is true, and if God creates and loves every individual, then why would he create 10 million homosexual Americans doomed for abomination? This is at least the number we know of. With 10 million people in just the United States who are members of the LGBTQ community, having a sexual orientation other than straight cannot be an accident. It seems too common. Or maybe this heteronormativity is part of society's separate spheres and anticipated gender roles in the workforce, hobbies, toys, and so on. Stereotypes allow labels to be created on what is considered feminine or masculine, and these constructs form the illusion it is wrong for a boy to play with Barbies and a girl to play with action figures. Labeling toys for a specified gender creates a discomfort in society when their child asks for the unattended toy, because it may threaten their sexuality. Additionally, Women who appear more masculine and men who behave more femininely are commonly given the uneducated label of being homosexual. When my brother was growing up, he would like to play with my Barbies with me and I never thought it was weird. And again, my parents didn't care, so we were lucky he was able to do that. But there are girls that go into Toys R Us and they see a male doctor and they see a female nurse and I think it plays into a lot of like bad parts of our society. I think the media, I think toys, all of it just makes people feel like they have to be a certain way. Like there's this one guy in particular that like I'm thinking of who was, you know, in the theater program, in chorus, like loved acting, singing, whatever, was like super nice friends with all girls, whatever. But he was like so Christian and so homophobic that like, you know, so many people like including myself would, you know, you'd think like stereotypically that like, you know, he would be gay or whatever, but he's just so like used to pushing back all of those um, feelings, I guess, uh, that it, like isn't an option. Society needs to quit judging people who are different than themselves and become more accepting of each other. I wish I had a better answer than, um, you know, we as the generation that has been dubbed the generation of change, um, we have the opportunity to change not only laws, but hearts and minds. And that's a quote that has always really stuck with me um, because, you know, you can change a law and that'll change how the legal system may or may not uh, perceive you per se. And I can't really say that, of course, for every community. Um, but, you know, to change laws, that's a good step. You can't, you don't really change minds um, and hearts uh, by, by just changing and altering laws. To understand the way the relationship anybody has with romance or sex, you have to talk to them about it because everyone is different. Look for more ways to love people. Look, instead of looking uh, at ways to discriminate what makes us different, like focus on what makes us the same. We need to shift the focus on what's really important and that's our health, our happiness, our family, our friends. It's not who you're sleeping with at night, it's not what they look like, it's not the color of their skin, it's just love and I think we need to leave that up to like your own heart 
and allow people to express themselves and we need to focus on the more important things in a person instead of their sexuality. Don't judge my sexuality. Don't judge my sexuality. 